Amen. Well, I hope that you're sitting at home or wherever you're watching this and you really uh, enjoyed that time of praise and worship. Amen. And I hope that you're singing along with us and, and following along, that you're not just observing, but you're actually worshiping together. And so uh, I, I want to thank everybody for allowing us to do this and the praise team. Uh, for Lionel, Randy, and John in the back, making sure this all goes well and gets out to all of you the way it should be. And so we, we thank them for that. And so today I want to share a, mes a message of a continuing about bringing people to Jesus. Now the message that I want to give today is titled Giving. Now I know, but just by that title, you're probably thinking, uh-oh, here goes. We wondered when it was going to come time that he'd begin to get worried about the tithes and offerings coming into the church, and now he's going to want our money. That preacher wants our money. Well, actually, it has nothing to do with tithes and offerings, but if that was your thought and you feel led, then here in just a little bit, we'll ask you to send your tithes and offerings. But that's not what this message is about today. The message is about getting people to Jesus, and the scripture that I want to use today is the one that all of us know, and it's John three sixteen. I want you to take your Bibles and turn there. We're going to be talking today again about giving, about how we're going to reach people for Jesus through these difficult times. And, and basically, my friends, what message do we need to be giving? What message does the church during these very troubling times and unsettled times, what message do we need to give to be able to reach people for Jesus? The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you for this great message right here that you gave in this one verse of how much you loved us and as a result of your loving, Lord, that you gave your son to die on the cross for us. That, Father, you held nothing back, but you gave us everything. And I pray today, Father, that this message would be an encouraging message, that people would take it to heart, that those that are listening that may not even know you, Father, they may not even know about our church, they may have just stumbled across this message. I pray, Father, that it would be an encouraging message, it would be a, a drawing message for them to be able to know how much you loved us, and Lord, that you are not going to abandon us, you're going to stay here with us, and you're going to go even before us. And that, Lord, through that, we can overcome all things. And God, we just love you, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. So, we're looking at bringing people to Jesus by this message that, that Jesus gave to Nicodemus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. In one of my devotion times a while back, I'm doing a book by, uh, by Christopher Shaw with my daily Bible reading and devotion time. And he gave an exercise that, that we're going to do here. So the praise team and the guys in the back, you're going to do it. Now, I hope everyone at home, I want you to do it as well. Because I, I want you to emphasize this. And what the exercise that he, he had us give, it's not calisthenics, it's not stretching, it's none of that. It is reciting this verse, but we're only going to recite so much of it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to recite the part that says, For God so loved the world that he gave. And we're going to stop there, but we're going to say it several times. Because I want you to begin to notice the same thing that I noticed whenever I began to do just that. So that verse is, so I want you to join with me, all of you at home or wherever you are. I want you to say it with us. You all know it. And it is, let's, let's just say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave. Now let's stop there. Okay, let's say it again. For God so loved the world that he gave. All right, one more time. Everybody at home, join us as well. For God so loved the world that he gave. The thing about this exercise that I noticed that he brought out that I hope that you would notice too is the more we said it, the word love was there, but the word gave gained emphasis every time. For God so loved the world that he gave. Gave, And that's why I wanted to title this message, Giving. Not in the financial state of, of, of asking people for money and staying faithful in tithes and offerings, but that we would know that God loved us and the message could be that he loved us so much that he gave to us. And he gave it toward the way that he wanted to bless us. So what I want to look at is a couple of points. 
The first point is that through this text, we see that God chose to love us. God chose to love us. He says in John 15, 6, but you did not choose me, but I have chosen you. This is the way this works. So, so God so loved us that he gave, he chose to love us. Now, I want you to understand, God didn't look at, at us. He doesn't look at us even today and see these amazing beings that he created and get all goosey feeling and, 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 and this you know, goosebumps and all over him and, and even the, the, the idea of this tingly feelings that we sometimes associate with love. That God didn't look at us and go, whoo, those are amazing people. And I get all goosey feelings toward them. And I get so excited just to be around them. This is the type of love. This isn't the way God feels with us. Because God doesn't just do that and look at us as amazing people. And get all goosey feeling. This is part of his will. He chooses. So when he looks at us, he says, these are the people that I choose to love. I, it's not, again, that tingly feeling that, in, that we, we, we basically call it an infatuation. My friends, can I tell you today that God is not infatuated with us? He's not infatuated. It didn't say that God felt so good toward these people. They didn't say that God did anything except God loved. He chose to love us. Because here's the thing that I found out about infatuation. Infatuation doesn't last. Because sometimes when we're infatuated with somebody, then all of a sudden the reality of who they are comes into play and we go, ooh, they really look nice, but they don't act too nice. They really look great, but they're not really great inside. So that infatuation dies. So when God looked at us, and the reason I said that he looked down on us, he didn't see amazing people. What we see in the Bible is that God tells us that he looked at us at our worst. He chose me at my worst. When he looked at me, he didn't see an amazing guy. He didn't see all the great stuff. God saw Harold Gacious at his very worst, rejecting him, turning away from him. And listen to me, there wasn't much to worldly love about Harold Gacious. So there may be, you may be thinking in your life right now, there's not a whole lot for God to love in me. Maybe your life is so out there. Maybe your life is so deep into stuff. Maybe, maybe you're sensing that there's emptiness and there's nothing worth living for. Why would God be able to love you? Listen to me. God is not able to love you because he's infatuated with you. God loves you because he chose to love you even at your worst. The Bible tells us over here in, in the book of Romans 5, 8, for, but God demonstrated his own love toward us then while we were yet still Sinners. Still sinners. Not even the prospect of what we could become, but what we were, what we are. God looked at us and listen, He looked at a world that there's not a whole lot to be infatuated with. Amen? There's not a lot. The Bible says that the that the, the heart of man is evil continually, all the time. That left to our own basic instincts we're naturally evil but God looked at us and while we were yet still sinners Christ died for us God chose to love me in my worst at my worst when I had no desire for him he doesn't love me because I'm an amazing guy and I'm a preacher and I do all of these things. His love, listen to me, his love is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. And the reason I know that I don't want feelings of love toward me is because feelings change. Amen? Feelings change. And so I don't want that. This type of love is, is an agape love. This is that sacrificing love. This is that God love. The highest form of love that we can have. It's selfless. It's sacrificial. And listen to me. It's unconditional. God looked at me and he chooses to love me. He looks at you. He chooses to love you. And it's with an unconditional love. While you were at your very worst. While you may still be at your very worst. Listen to me. God loves you. He chooses 
to love you. I've said this so many times <clears throat> as pastor here at the church, that you can't do anything to make God love you any more than he loves you right now. You can't work enough. I can't preach enough of good messages. I can't, y'all can't sing enough good songs. You at home can't do enough good stuff to make God love you any more than he loves you right now. But here's the cool thing. He also can't love, you can't do anything to make him love you any less than he loves you right now. Why? Because it's not an infatuation. It's not conditional. It's not that I love you if you will follow me. I love you if you will do what I've asked you to do. This is that agape love. This is that God love that we're not able to do on our own. We, even here, you at home, we can't have this type of love in our hearts on our own. Now, we have the other kinds, but God chose to love us. <clears throat> and as a result of him choosing to love us, we see then that God is giving toward us. For God chose to love you, and he loves you so much that now he gives toward us do you understand that when God gives toward us he he doesn't give to win our favor does that make sense he doesn't do it he says oh I hope if I could give something to Harold oh I wish he would fall in love with me because I get so much better. It's basically emptying out of self and selfishness. This is why he says, I am giving of myself to you. It's not to win favor with me. Because here's the thing that I want us to understand. God is God with us or without us. Amen? God is God whether you worship him or, are not, or, or not. God is God whether I preach this message or not. God is God whether our nation turns to him or not. It doesn't decrease God. He's not trying to do anything to win my favor because he will not be enhanced by anything that I do for him because he is God. He's God. He's not more omnipotent because we believe in him. He's not all more, all, he doesn't gain more power because we had worship here today. God is God. So he gives to us selflessly with no selfishness in mind, no trying to win favor. Now, a lot of times we do things under our own power to try to win favor of people. Whenever we see somebody that we're, we might have infatuations with, oh, we'll do stuff to try to get them to notice us. We, we may even write, remember, remember when you were a little kid and you might have wrote the letter, do you like me? To put two boxes, yes or no, because I like you. What we were hoping was that we would win favor by them. And so this was a condition. But my friends, God is giving toward us and it has nothing of himself trying to win us over. It's not selfishly trying to give so that he can get something back. But he chose to love us because that was his will. God's love is translated into actions. I want you to turn in your Bibles. We don't have it on the screen, but I, I, I wanted to read this for you. In 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, we all know it as the love chapter. Listen to what it says about love. Now, this love here is not our infatuated love. It's not that. It is God love, that agape. It says here, in action, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks, thinks no evil. Does not in rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Listen, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Listen to this part right here. Love never fails. Do you understand what it's saying here? 
This is that God love. Now, I know a lot of times, and I even do it too, when we perform weddings, and there's a lot of times we will say that, and we'll read it all. Oh, it's a nice little thing to do at weddings because we're thinking a man and woman, they love each other. But listen to me. This love only works if it's not the infatuated love, if it's the love that I fall in love with somebody, that erotic love or whatever. It is that God love. It is that agape love. It is that self-sacrificing love. That we say, love is all of this. Because what I want us to understand, this 1 Corinthians 13 love is not demanding, but giving. God's love demands nothing of us. Amen? So you're here today, and you may be thinking, well, what do I have to do to win God's love, to win God's favor? You don't have to do anything. Because he already has demonstrated his love to you, that while you were still a sinner, he sent Jesus to die for you. It's not demanding, it's giving. Here's the other thing. Love doesn't wait. This type of love doesn't wait. It takes initiative. For God so loved the world that he gave his son. He didn't wait on us. He didn't wait on you. He didn't wait on you to get your life together. He didn't wait on you to get things turned around, turn over a new leaf. God it took the initiative. He said, I love you. I choose to love you. I'm going to send my son for you. It takes the initiative. But love doesn't see the benefits or seek benefits. It doesn't seek anything. It basically sacrifices. God didn't do it so that he could benefit us or from us. Because I'm here to tell you, God can't benefit anymore from me. I know me. I'm not a great asset for God in worldly sense. So we see then that God doesn't seek benefits from it. He sacrifices. Now here's the other thing. Love doesn't stop. It's eternal. Because this type of love that God shares for you and for me and everyone here in this room, it's not again an infatuation. It is a choice. God has chosen to love us. And it says here, this agape, sacrificial, unconditional love never fails. Now listen. I fail God. Amen? I fail him all the time. But here's the thing that I want you to understand. Church, I want you to understand this. All those listening, I want you to understand this. God will never fail you. Never. I don't care what you're going through. God will not fail you. God is always there with you. He said, I promise you that I'll always love you. I'll always be with you. I'll never, I'll never reject you. I'll always be there by your side. That's the type of love that we have with God. It doesn't stop. Now, the thing is, we can repel that love. I can reject that love. But can you understand this? I can't stop it. I can't make it stop. I can't make it fail. It's, it's kind of like, and I, I, I saw this as a demonstration. It's like when you go out in the rain... You go out in the rain and you take your umbrella and you pop it open and you raise it up. Well, here's what you've done. The rain is now not affecting you. But you know what you didn't do? You didn't stop the rain. The rain is still going. The umbrella just repels the rain. So what we choose to do, because God's love never fails, it never stops, it's always unconditional. But here's the thing, we can reject that love. Oh, it doesn't stop. He doesn't stop loving me when I reject him because I know that for a fact. Because before he called me and before I received him as my Savior at First Baptist Church of Shulter, Oklahoma, when I was 17 years old, my senior year in high school, I had had other opportunities. Uh, I was in revival services. A couple of nights I kind of felt it, but I walked out going, no, 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 I don't think so. I don't think so. You know what? God didn't say, well, fine. If that's the way you want to be, then fine. I'm done. No, God kept loving me. He was patient with me. Because love is patient, suffers long, doesn't keep score, all these things. And that night, when I was at First Baptist Church hearing Brother Buddy Kime preach, I remember taking down the umbrella, putting it away and saying, here I am, God. I now no longer want to repel that love from you. Oh, it's there. I know it. I see it. I, I know it's out there. 
But God, today, I want to receive that love. I want it to be working in my life. And the last thing is, I get ready to wrap this up. The last thing is, is this right here. God's love, of course, is not demanding. We talked about those things. It doesn't wait. It takes initiative. It doesn't see benefits. It sacrifices. It doesn't stop. It, it is eternal. But the last thing is this. God is our strength. Because of that love and because of him giving, that is our strength. The thing I want us to understand is we receive from God. We receive it from him. In these strange times, in these times that we're not certain how things are going to go. But here's the cool thing. Not even through these difficult times, but even beyond we can receive this, God, this love from God because God is our strength and God is our comfort. How are we going to make it through all of this? Because his love is for us and his love is sacrificing for us. His love is giving us strength. His love is giving us encouragement that I can stand here today before you and tell you I don't care what's going on in your life. God still loves you and he wants to help you <clears throat> because he says I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God can be our strength. But here's the thing as well. Giving to others. As God gives that agape love to me and he works through me, now, as I said earlier, we in our natural state can't have agape love. Oh, we can have all the others, but those fail. Those are selfish. Those are good as long as everybody around us is doing what they want us to do. That love is that way. But it's when I surrender my life over to him and that I receive that agape love in my life. Now I am ready. I can now give that type of love out. That's the type of love that it's not I get for me and mine. I'm going to take care of me and mine. Now listen, I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of that type of love that I'll get for me and mine. Amen. Finding toilet paper. Huh? Can everybody say amen? Folks, they're not going to need that much toilet paper. But what's the mindset? I'm not going to take what I need and give the re let others have it. I'm going to take for me and mine. We are going to be taken care of. My friend, listen to me. That's not the agape love. So am I telling you, oh, don't go out and get the stuff you need. No, get, get what you need. That's a, it was a joke, all right? But it's the fact that the world I'm wanting to demonstrate to you is not capable of this God love. Church, church, listen to me. Because I have received that God love. Because I am letting that Holy Spirit work through me. And you can let it work through you. And all of you here today can let it work through you. We are capable of agape love. Of not being about us in these troubled times. Not think, thinking I've got to take care of me. But realizing I can have peace today. Because God is going to take care of me. And as a result of knowing that I'm confident that God is taking care of me, guess what I get to do then? I have the confidence, and we as a confident of the, as the church, to take care of others. Why? Because my needs are going to be met. And I don't, I, I'm not worried about me. I'm, I'm worried about my neighbor. I'm worried about, hey, Jesus said, even be worried about your enemy. You, you understand when he said, love your enemy? You know, that wasn't a joke, amen? He wasn't trying to be smart. He was really saying that if you have experienced the agape love from me, now what I want you to do is in turn, I want you to love your enemy. And you know what he tells us to do for our enemy? Pray for them. Take care of them. Go the extra mile. He also says that if someone comes and they, they want you to walk a mile for them, what does he tell us to do? Walk too. But that's not fair, God. Yeah, it is. 
That's that sacrificial love. That's that giving that I've just been talking about. That's that giving. Because I receive it from God and I have peace. It's not about me and mine. It's not a love that the world is capable of. It is a love that God gives us, that he chooses to give us. And in turn, we then must choose to love others. When he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, that's what he's, he's not talking about infatuation. He's not talking about brotherly love or erotic love. Man, he's, he's talking about this agape. And you say, boy, preacher, am I capable of that? Not on your own. The church isn't capable of that on our own. But we're capable of that when we receive Jesus into our life and we choose As he chose to love us at our worst, then we choose to love the people of the world. That's how the church is going to, listen, that's how the church is going to get to minister to people in these difficult times. It's imperative that we as the church don't hold ourselves up, block ourselves in, and say, we're going to take care of ours. No, man, this is the time we start saying, okay, God, show us, how how can we love those people? How can we how can we sacrifice for them? How can, we, how can we bring them to Jesus by showing them the same type of love, God, that you showed me? Because listen to me, and I close with it. There's a lot of people right now that are scared. There's a lot of people right now who, who are uncertain of what lies ahead of them. There's a lot of people who are out trying to take care of themselves so much. They haven't even thought about anyone else. And instead of us as the church sitting back going, how dare they? We say, what can we do to minister to them, to show them a Jesus that loves them, that's going to take care of them? What can we do to bring confidence to them, comfort to them, encouragement to them? What can we do? Well, what we can do is to show them the type of love that God has shown us. That we take down our umbrellas, we let that agape love pour into us and as it pours into us then we get to pour it out and my friends listen to me these are how we're going to get through this time this is how we're going to get through this is that the church have the confidence of realizing that God loved us so much that he gave he gave I want to encourage you. If you don't feel that today, if, you're not, if you don't have that peace and that confidence, if you do have a heavy burden on you, and, and man, you feel, like, you feel like you don't know what's going to happen next, and you're just so uncertain about life, maybe you're even in a situation in your own life that you don't know how you got there, you don't know how you're going to get out of it, then I want to encourage you today to listen to this message. God loved you so much that he gave where you are right now. He still loves you. And God will reach down and he will touch your life and he will change your heart if you'll just call on him today. Give yourself over to him. That's where the hope to get through all this is. It comes from Jesus. Would you receive that today? You're going to have that opportunity here in just a minute. You're going to have that opportunity. But here's what we're going to have, just as we did last week. If you're not sure about any of this and you need to hear from somebody, you need somebody to pray with you. You don't have to wait till tomorrow when the office is open or till this, all this stuff is down and everybody can start getting back together. You can call today here at the church office. We have somebody already on the, by the phone and they're going to be waiting on you to call. Our church number is 580-536-4227. If you need to talk to someone today, there's someone there that will listen. Someone there that will pray with you. All you have to do is to call. Do not reject that love that's around you. Take down that umbrella. Let that love and the grace of God flow over you. That you can feel the need that just wipe away. And man, you can have a peace and a confidence that only those who know Jesus can have. Maybe you say, Pastor Iva, I know that I have Jesus. But man, I've entered into a tough time and I I don't know what to do. And I, I have 
I have become all about me. Then I want you to understand that God doesn't love you any less. He still loves you and he still wants you to experience him. All you have to do is turn to him this morning. Say, God, here I am. Restore back to me the joy of your salvation. Would you come today? Again, you can call or you can email us. Whatever you have to do. But right now, at this time, I want to ask the praise team to come back. And we're going to enter into a time of, I, I, I want you to meditate. I want you to pray. I want you to call. I want you to call somebody. If you're, if you're, if you're in a, a small group, call somebody in your group. But during this song, we're going to have a time of you to just to sing, to praise God through this time. Or you can call or you can pray. You can get on your knees before God, whatever you have to do. But during this song, over these next few moments, then I want you to listen or I want you to join in. But I want you to experience that love. I want to pray with you very quickly, and then I'm going to turn it back over to them and let them go, and then, then we'll come back and, and we'll close out. But if God's speaking to your heart and you have a need, would you call right now? Would you just pray right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. And God, we thank you for your healing power not just in our physical bodies, but Lord, in our spiritual souls. And I pray today as we enter into this next time of praise and worship, that God, while this song is being presented, that we can join back in to praise you. God, we can be encouraged by you. But Father, I pray if there's someone listening that's not sure that they have Jesus in their life, that God, they would call upon you right now, or maybe even call the church and visit with somebody. That, God, they could know that peace and that confidence of only the love that you are capable of and knowing, Lord, that you chose to love us. Father, with other things that are going on in our lives, I pray if there's someone there that needs to just turn it to you, God, that they, we would turn everything over to you. God, we would seek your guidance and your power, your healing. But God, we'd, we, we would, we'd call on you to bring a miracle to our nation, to our world. And God, let it be in such a way that no one can argue that something miraculous turned this thing around. Oh, God, that you might receive the glory from it, that we would have an opportunity to praise your name for it. But Lord, even so, we praise your name even now. So take these next few moments and speak to our hearts. Let your spirit be with everyone that's paying attention to this service right now. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Would you all lead us in singing? <laughs>